Football in Italy is broken. For over a century, the money, clubs, and press have been concentrated in the north, leaving southern and central teams scrapping for attention. Joined in the fight against the northern giants were Napoli and Roma. That is, until 2014, when a Roma Ultra opened fire against Napoli. But before we get there, we need to explore some important context for the rivalry. Three key dates are August 1st, 1926, June 7th, 1927, and April 8th, 1928. In 1926, SSC Napoli became one of the oldest football clubs in southern Italy. A year later, Roma came onto the scene in central Italy and were swiftly challenging for major honors. Then in 1928, these two newcomers met for the first time in the Coppa Cani, a match Roma won for one. That was their official introduction. However, it didn't become a true rivalry until decades later. Napoli and Roma entered their golden eras right around the same time, boasting legendary figures and, more importantly, trophies throughout the 80s. For Napoli, this included players like Bruscolotti, a powerful fullback who provided leadership and order to the back line, Kareka, a tall, fast striker who was clinical in front of goal, and of course, Maradona. They won two Scudettos, two Coppa Italias, and a UEFA Cup, and could have won much more seeing as they were seven-time runners-up in those competitions. Their Roman counterparts had players such as Bruno Conti, nicknamed the Mayor of Rome for his outstanding performances and for being one of the greatest wingers Italy had ever seen, Carlo Ancelotti, the legendary player and later manager, and of course, Giuseppe Giannini, a Roman icon nicknamed the Prince and one of the best midfielders of his generation. The Giolo Rossi also won major honors, including a Scudetto and four Coppa Italias. They also just missed out on a UCL title to Liverpool in penalties. You could say all was well in Rome and Naples. But that wouldn't be true. You see, Italian football was greatly unbalanced. Take a look at the list of Serie A winners from 1960 to 1980. Notice how 1974 was the only season a northern club didn't win, and you'd have to go back three decades to find a Scudetto winner from the south. So there was this general feeling around southern and central clubs that they just wanted the trophy. It didn't have to be their club, just someone not from the north. This brought Napoli and Roma together, and as the two largest non-Northern clubs, the fan bases would cheer for each other, sit next to each other on match days, and travel to one another's cities and homes. It was a beautiful friendship between clubs. They even had a tradition of sending one fan of each team to exchange flags during their pre-match activities. This matchup of central southern Italian strength and symbol of unity earned this picture the name Darby del Sol, Darby of the Sun. It was a utopia the perfect image of what football ought to be, a game of unity. But there's a problem. Utopias simply can't exist, because each person has their own vision of perfection and it is impossible to make everyone agree. The same was true for Napoli and Roma. After all, only one team came with the Scudetto. Roma was far and away the better side in the early 80s. The first blow came in October of 1982, when Roma's 3-1 win at the Stadio San Paolo caused Napoli fans to protest against their club and things only got worse when the two sides met later that season in a 5-2 win for the Giallarossi. That same year, Roma won the league. Another blow came in 1983, this time in Rome, where the Giallarossi walked away with a 5-1 win. The traveling Napoli fans again protested by taking off their banners and chanting Roma Roma. Roma would go on to finish two points off first place. Meanwhile, Napoli would suffer a second consecutive season in the bottom half of the table. Napoli had had enough and was ready to finally bring the Scudetto to Naples. On July 5, 1984, the city of Naples welcomed Diego Armando Maradona for a record fee of 12 million euros, a shadow of transfer fees today, but was remarkable nonetheless. However, this move was a little strange. You see, Maradona was one of the most talented players on the planet and had gone to Barcelona for a world record fee just two years prior. So, going from title contention in Spain to a subpar team in southern Italy seemed like a fall from grace. But not to the Portinope. To them, he would rewrite Napoli's history, and they hailed this new author as the god of Naples from day one. In his first season, Maradona provided 17 goals and 11 assists in all comps, helping Napoli finish in eighth, one point behind Roma. That following season, Napoli doubled down on their investment to bring in Bruno Giordano, one of the best strikers in Italy. He netted 116 times before he arrived in Naples. The problem wasn't what he'd done, but rather who he'd done it for. Giordano had spent the entirety of his professional career at Lazio, who have a long-standing rivalry with Roma. In fact, Roma and Lazio share a stadium to this day, the Stadio Olimpico. And since he was a Lazio legend, this move dealt another blow to Napoli and Roma's friendship. And more issues were on the horizon. 
In the 1986-87 season, the two sides met in a heated environment. The trouble, however, was off the pitch, as Roma fans began chanting curse words at Bruno Giordano, and Napoli fans countered with their own foul chance toward Bruno Conti. Napoli won the match and at the end of the season brought home the city's first ever Scudetto. The cracks in the wall were getting too big to ignore and it finally came crumbling down the following year. October 25th, 1987, the day that broke the camel's back. Idol holders Napoli traveled up to Rome for the 107th Derby del Sol. In hindsight, this match was destined to be tense given the Roma fans inhospitable welcome to Napoli. Roma opened the second half with a headed goal from Roberto Puzzo. Two Napoli players were later sent off and a fight broke out on the pitch, but even with nine men, Napoli brought the game level with Maradona's corner converted by Giovanni Francini. The match ended in a 1-1 draw. After the chaos, Napoli midfielder Salvatore Bani made an offensive gesture to the Roma fans, and apologies from Bani later on wasn't enough to repair the damage done. The friendship was over. Fast forward about three decades and the once felt brotherhood had developed into pure rivalry. And perhaps the best example of this came in 2014. Napoli and Roma met four times during the 2013-14 season. The first league match came on October 18th, when Roma won 2-0. And by their second meeting, Roma were seven points clear of them in the table. That second match came on February 12, 2014, in the Coppa Italia, and was set to be one of the matches of the season given the immense talent between the two sides. Napoli had Rafael Benitez, one of the most accomplished managers in world football, and world-class talent in Hamsik, Higuain, Insigne, Mertens, and Pepe Reina. On the Roman side were players like Benetia, Gervinho, De Rossi, and Francesco Totti. Before we get to the actual match, I have to talk about Totti, because that man embodied Rome. I can't tell you how many times I learned about the Roman Empire in school. And details aside, what mainly stood out was that Romans were conquerors, leaders, strong and passionate. I think these words accurately depict Francesco Totti and what he represented to Italy as a whole. He's not just one of the best, he's the best Roma player of all time. In his 785 appearances for the Gilarossi, he scored 307 goals and provided 206 assists, one of which came early in this match for Gervinho's second goal of the tournament. The match ended 3-2 to Roma. A week later, the two sides met for the second leg of the Coppa Italia semi-final, which was much more one-sided than their previous encounter. Callejon opened the floodgates in the first half with a headed goal, and finishes from Higuain and Jorginho soon followed. But the match reached its climax in the 78th minute when Roma midfielder Kevin Strootman was sent off for clapping the referee's decision. And as he walked off the pitch, Strootman spat at the Partenope. As you can imagine, this wasn't well received, but the fans couldn't be all that upset given their 3-0 win. Napoli was headed for the final, but sadly, tragedy was just around the corner. Napoli was set to face Fiorentina, who sat 8 points behind them in the league, and as usual, the final would be played at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. But before the match had even started, a Roma ultra named Daniele De Santes ambushed a Napoli fan bus and shot several people. One of those unfortunate victims was Ciro Esposito, who later died from the sustained injury. ESPN quoted Esposito's mother who said, let this be a lesson so that what happened to my son never happens again. My life is not the same and nothing can make up for losing my son. But I've never said a nasty word because I don't have any hate within me. I've already forgiven DeSantis. I'm not sure other Napoli fans shared her model forgiveness, but regardless, many on both sides saw the message. Football is a game and supporting your club is one of the best experiences you'll ever have. But what is football without respect?